Do you hate the words, I want to think it over? Would you like to learn to love those words? Shall we go over how to close the most common objections? We shall. What's happening good everybody? Eli's dad here with another sales lesson on Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. Now if you know it's going to rain, you carry an umbrella, right? You're prepared. Today, we will solve the number one closing issue. I want to think it over. And perhaps a few more too. Once again, it's okay to listen and learn while I mentor Eli on some of the finer points to closing the sale. Well, here we are again, Eli, and we're still talking about closing. I was wondering, can you envision yourself learning to close the number one most common objection? I want to think it over. Can you envision all of the happy clients that you will create because they will buy your product or service and receive all the benefits associated with that purchase? Can you see the happiness you will create with all the extra income you will receive because you help them? What are you going to do with all that money? New car, new home, extended vacation? Just what are your dreams? Now when you're visualizing achieving your goals and dreams, it's an emotional experience, isn't it? Do you remember that we said that people buy on emotion, but they justify their purchases with logic? Don't ever forget that. It's a fundamental of sales as one of the cornerstones. Now you may remember when you were just a little puppy and I took you to the bakery with me. Would you like something, Eli? Says your very loving dad. Oh yes, I'd like the cupcake and one of those and some of those chocolate cookies and... And then what did the mom say? Eli, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. The emotion of satisfying the sugar addiction was ample motivation. What's my point here? Well, as you learned from our last session, Tactics for Closing, your client is not a professional buyer. They are not accustomed to making buying decisions. They are amateurs, and they will act like amateurs even when logic dictates action to solve an issue. It's imperative that you understand the why and because people respond the way that they do, just as the doctor must know the ailment before the right prescription could be administered to the patient. You must also know the variables associated with allowing the virus to continue so you'll not lose the patient. So what am I saying exactly? If you have given a stellar, a stellar presentation and warm-up and your client has agreed with all of your tie-downs, that's what professionals call the little agreements, the little yeses, and the client still says, I want to think it over, then you've got an amateur. How fortunate for you that you are a professional. You are the car mechanic that knows to check the oil or the battery or the transmission. The amateur doesn't know those things. Here's what you do know. The client wants to buy. Yes, he wants to buy. Help them do it. Here's how. Do you remember all of the hot buttons that you uncovered in the warm-up? These are the emotional catalysts that you want to use as ammunition so that both you excuse me, so that both your client and you will score a bullseye, the purchase of your product or service. Here's an example. Fred, Ethel, may I ask you this? Now you did say that because of your large family, especially teenage girls, that running out of hot water was becoming more of an issue every day, right? And clearly a new 80 gallon solar heated tank will provide oodles of water for the whole family. True? And over the long haul, having the sun provide the energy to heat the water will be significantly more economical than paying the utility company, right? In fact, adding solar to your lovely home will also increase the value of your home should you ever want to sell it. Am I right on that? And when the girls get married, you may decide that a smaller house will be more manageable than this very large house. It may not make sense now, but it may make sense later on, right? It'll give you more financial leverage and more options, won't it? 
And don't forget the tax break you'll receive from the government. I bet it will feel great to take advantage of a tax break just like the big corporations do, won't it? Now do remember that the government gives tax breaks because they're trying to encourage a certain activity, aren't they? And as you know, the government removes tax incentives too, don't they? You can never be sure that your ultimate out-of-pocket cost will be as low as it is right now. This president acts quickly and decisively in that particular arena, doesn't he? And most importantly, the system will pay for itself within a very short amount of time, too, correct? What are you going to do with the extra money that you save? New car, vacation, college education for the girls? Lots of things to pay for, and not too many that can save you money. Isn't that right? This, however, is one of them, isn't it? Does it make sense to save money while you can, when you need it the most, because of your maturing family, while the tax break is still available? It does make sense, doesn't it? My goodness, Eli, look at how many closes there are in that little speech. A good salesperson is always prepared with oodles of ammunition. Sell the client their own dream back. Here's what you need to remember. When your client initially says no, N-O, what they really mean is they need to know, K-N-O-W, more. Save a few selling points for, I want to think it over clients. Drill, practice, and rehearse your speech because many of your clients will be amateurs. You know, Eli, whenever I had an executive as a prospect, I was always jumping for joy because I know that making decisions was part of their job. The presentations always, succeed, always seemed like a well-scripted play. Get the agreements, the tie-downs, and the decision was logical and fulfilling emotionally, too, for both the clients and for me. How about another close for you, Eli? Let's say that you have a product where there's some room for you to negotiate the cost to the customer. Since I just used solar, panel as, solar panels as an example, let's use them again. Suppose the client says, you know, Eli's dad, we like everything that you sold us. It's just right now, the price is kind of high for our budget. Well, yes, Fred. It ain't like buying groceries. It can take a bite out of you financially. I see that. Maybe we can do something for each other. How about this? I was down at the warehouse this morning, and the boss owes me a favor. When the truck arrived with some new solar panels, it dropped them off, and then it left. When the warehouse guys unpacked the shipment, one of them had a small scratch on the side of it. Now, you could hardly notice it, but the boss said, It has to go back. Somebody's got to pay for that shipping. When we place that solar panel on the roof, nobody will be able to see the scratch unless they look carefully, and they're 20 feet tall. Now, if I could get you that solar panel for half off, what would have to be paid for shipping the old one back and for shipping the replacement panel back to us, somewhere between four and $500, could we have a deal tonight? Fred agrees. Okay, Fred, let me call the warehouse and make sure that it hasn't been shipped. Guess what's going to happen when you call the warehouse? It's a miracle! That solar panel is still there, and you have a deal. Key point. Don't call the warehouse until Fred and Ethel agree to the if I could, would you proposition. Remember, all you're doing is helping someone that is uncomfortable making decisions make a right decision. How about one more? Let's say that you're selling roofing. You have several different options that are made of different materials and, as a result, have different prices. The Mertzes, Fred and Ethel, definitely need their roof repaired. Bad storm damage. You've given them the choice of three different materials to use for the process. Guess what? They've chosen the cheapest one. Now, being a smart salesperson, you know that they visited with other roofers. You were smart enough to arrange it so that you were the last one that they saw. You always want to be last when there are competitive bids. 
Now here's a good way to make sure that you get the sale and at the product and the price that you want. I see that you've chosen the first option that I showed you. Was that because of the price? Because it's the least expensive? They nod and smile at you. That material, Fred, Ethel, is very sturdy. And it will do the job that you want it to do. May I ask you a question? Are you planning on living here for the next 15 years or more? Well, yes, until the twins are grown and through college, that'll be at least 15 more years. We may even retire here. That would be at least 30 years. That's what I thought. I'd like to talk to you about the difference between price and cost. May I? They look confused, but they nod. Price is what you pay right now to get the job done. Cost is what the ultimate cost will be to you in the long run. Here's what I mean. The material that you have chosen will do a super duper job for about 10 to 12 years. Very durable for the price. The other material, the one that you didn't choose, does initially cost a little bit more to get started with, but it's guaranteed to last for 25 years. Now let's say that the first material, the one you've chosen, lasts 15 years. You'll certainly have received a good bang for your buck. Then you're going to have to replace it because things do wear out. But 15 years is good stuff for roofing. Your previous material only lasted 10, right? You did say that, right? Now Ethel, do you have a calculator? Great. Let's take the price of the first material and divide it by 15. Let's take the price of the second material and divide it by 25. What's the difference, Ethel? Fairly significant, isn't it? Do you see what I mean between the difference between price and cost? Now, which of the two materials do you want on your roof? Eli, when you ask a question like that, you either win or you win. Say what? That's called the alternative close. If they choose the first material, you win. They bought. If they choose the second material, you win with the larger commission. When you give people choices where they profit with either answer and you profit with either answer, that's ideal, isn't it? Now, son, I could go on and on with more closes. There are a zillion sources that you may utilize to learn more. That's how I learn them from people, from books, from seminars, from videos, and so on. I especially learned them by listening to them over and over while I was driving from place to place in my car. Great way to learn. An expert is always a student before they become an expert. All right, we're gonna stop working on closes for now, but I invite you to send your requests for closing help in the comment section below. I'd like to make an important point to you, Eli, about something else that separates the professional salesperson from the order taker. The order taker thinks that the sale is complete once the client has agreed to the sale and written a check for the purchase. The professional knows better. Next time we get together, our topic will be the button up, the art of keeping the sale on the books. Remember, Successful people are used to making decisions. They are decisive and they stick with their decision. The amateur, on the other hand, is slow to make a decision and frequently changes their mind. If you know this amateur trait going in, should you be prepared to overcome the amateur virus with the proper serum? Of course you should. That's our next topic. Now please remember to subscribe and click the bell so you won't miss that lesson or any others. Please share these lessons with people that are serious about their success. I strongly recommend that you listen to the whole series on sales and persuasion repeatedly so that you may own the material. There are many skills to master before you become a natural salesperson. Steph Curry is a natural shooter because he's practiced by taking 10 million shots. Our thought for the day is... The definition of a sale is taking a person from point A to point B by asking a series of logical questions where the answer is always yes. Remember, a person buys on emotion, 
but they justify their purchase with logic. And because we never end a meeting on a philosophical note, get out there and charge. I'm Eli's dad.